Father God, we come this morning. We come first to say we thank you. God, we thank you for your kindness. And we give us your grace and your mercy. We thank you, God, for watching over us all last week. Protecting us. Keeping us from all hurt, harm, and danger. Today, God, we come to celebrate in you. We thank you for being so good to us. We pray now, God, that you cover this worship experience. I pray today, God, for your people, for a fresh anointing. I pray, God, for a spirit of love and peace, unity to dwell among us. I ask now, God, that you would look over your praise leaders, that as they minister to some, God, that you would anoint them afresh. Pray for your waiting congregation today. That we have high expectations. Believing you to do miraculous and awesome things in our life. Someone today, God, needs a major breakthrough. Need a breakthrough in their family today. Some families are entangled in hurt and pain today. But we know, God, that you are a deliverer. Somebody needs a healing move today. God, we believe in divine healing. And so we thank you in advance for what you're going to do. And we thank you, God, for how you're going to do it. I pray for your doorkeepers as they stand today. The media servants and musicians, God. Bless and flood this place with your presence. Have your way. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Come on, all over this sanctuary and at home. Let's open up our mouth. Come on, open up your mouth this morning. And we shout a praise unto the Lord. How many of you have much to be thankful for? You bless the name of the Lord in this place. Come on, we need radical believers this morning. But don't mind opening up your mouth. Don't mind giving God some praise. And thank you, God, for being so good. Now, there's some grateful people this morning that know that if it had not been for the Lord, who was on your side, where would you be? Come on, I need some radical believers this morning, even behind your past, that will open up your mouth and tell the Lord, thank you. Oh, come on, thank you. Come on, thank you. Come on, we bless your name, God. We adore you. We magnify you. We give you all the praise, all the glory.
Thank you. 
shall creed and believe as a church family. We join in with him in celebration of knowing that he is a true and living God and he is holy. Let's share it together. We're strong in our faith. We're strong in our family. We're strong in our We're strong in the word. We're strong in our worship. We're strong in evangelism. We're strong in ministry. We are new generation Praise God. Amen. Let's have Share two announcements as those with the announcement will come forth at this time. You may be seated.
is through spending time with God that healing has become a friend of yours. Yeah. It's through prayer that God has made your enemies become your footstool. Prayer changes things. Many of us have discovered that prayer does not change the item. Prayer changes you to be able to deal with it. We're preparing for prayer time now. Some simply says, wash me. Believers are believing God to wash them. They're believing God for a full cleansing. For healing over their bodies and their minds. And so as we prepare for prayer, there are a few names that you will find attached on the screen. But even beyond the names that are on the screen, there may be a family member of yours that you're believing God for healing. You're believing God for a miraculous move in your own life. So as we prepare to come to the altar, Psalmist lead us and we trust God at this time. You're believing God to do something awesome. Wash me, Lord. If you desire to come to the altar at this time, you began to make your way there. Thank you, Lord. Wash me, Lord. Oh, we bless your name. Wash me. Thank you, Lord. Come on, you got time to get and just meditate right there. In your prayers.
We speak God healing from the crown of heads to the sole of feet. That bodies shall be delivered from the sickness. We know through your word, God, that you are a healer. And so today we call on you for healing. And we thank you in advance for the healing that shall take place in the life of your people. Pray now, God, for healing over the body of Geneva Ruff. Pray, God, for your hand to rest over her now. I pray, God, for your hand to over Elaine Gardner and her family today. God, I pray for entrepreneurs today. I pray for the hand to rest over Orlando and his work. God, we are believing you at this altar today that you will do exceedingly and abundantly. God, we're believing you at this altar today to move mightily on our behalf. Someone needs a financial breakthrough today. God, I speak life over the finances of your people. I speak, God, a multitude of breakthroughs that in the name of Jesus, no man or woman shall go lacking. But at this altar, they shall have more than enough. And so we speak it today, God, that, that we will receive blessings, pressed down, shaken together, running over. But we will be stewards of our finances unto you, God. That we will be faithful and loyal in our giving unto you. Bless now in a special way. I pray for children in this summertime, God, that you keep them from hurt, harm, and danger. That you protect them in their play, their laughter, their learning, and their fun. That you allow no hurt, harm, or danger to come upon them. I pray, God, for a decrease in violence in our community. That in the name of Jesus, people will yield and submit unto you. And know that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Have your way, God. Bless this church. We thank you for these 26 years. You've been better than good to us. You've been a covering and a protector. You've been a provider and a helper. And not only a helper, you've been our main source, God, that we could rely on through all seasons. And at this altar, we tell you thank you. From the pulpit to the pew, God, we bless your name. From Founders Day of July 1996 to now, God, you've been good. And all I can say is thank you, God, for being such an awesome God. Now, God, multiply your fruit, multiply your harvest, bless souls to continue to be saved, ministries to continue to be born, bless your ordination service next week, that is not in vain, but of fruit and fire and blessings. Have your way in this place, in the mighty name of Jesus, through preaching power, Souls shall be saved and revived, and you being God will get the glory. In the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Let the church say amen. Come on, watch me, Lord.
Thank you, Lord. Come on, put your blessed hands together. You may be seated. We bless God in this place. We prepare now to worship and giving. We prepare this time to bring our gifts unto the Lord in the spirit of thanksgiving. As you prepare, you may give through the app, but you may take the time to give in the envelopes, but we prepare to come now as offertorial givers and bring in a tithe or offering. Now love gives in the spirit of celebration. And so as you prepare to bring your gifts, you're thankful unto God for this time that God has given us to sow into the ministry and into the work. Just for today, I want to just flow just a little back different. We're not going to walk around today. We're going to receive your envelopes. You're going to pass into the outer aisles for a moment and share in the worship of giving. The worship of giving. Amen. This time, our men, I believe, will minister. Amen. Men, as you prepare to minister, the people of God, prepare to give. Prepare your envelope. Prepare your envelope. Prepare your gift to give at this time. Oh 
Not only do we believe that he rose, but we believe in his time of ministry. In those three years of ministry from the age of 30 to 33 years of age that he healed the sick, sight to the blind, delivered men and women. And what gives us the joy of the unity of the fellowship that we find even throughout the book of Ephesians in those chapters of the unity of the fellowship is that we believe that Jesus is coming back again. We believe that he is coming back again. We believe that while we're here on earth in our common views and relationships that Jesus will bring us through. Jesus will heal and deliver and set the captive free. There are times when people will have things in common of birthrights. There are times when I've heard people say, I, I knew it was something about you when I discovered that we were born in the same month. Some of you said that. There are people that identify with zodiac signs and there are people that identify with relationships where they grew up in communities or neighborhoods and they can relate to one another because of their experiences of where they grew up. It's something there are times when people in the body of Christ find out that someone, say for example, is from Georgia and they've been living here in Miami. They will go up to that individual and ask them, what part of Georgia are you from? Yes, they're from Alabama, or Mississippi, or some other city because they want to be able to see, can we, or do we connect from a family setting? There are times when people may have the same last name and they want to see if there's a history or relationship of us being kin to one another? Is there a kindred among us through the geology of families from one generation to another? There are commonalities in relationships and there are times that we've discovered in marriages uh, that there are few things uh, that a couple will have in common, but what makes them be able to bond down through the years is that they may be different in their characteristics and their makeup. Have you ever seen that in a relationship where there may be a wife that is more conservative and laid back and quiet until you make her mad? And then there's a husband that is always talkative. Help me somebody. He, he, he can talk, he can talk. And then there are times when it's flipped, when it's a wife that can talk and it's a husband and somebody says to him, George, how do you put up with her? He said, I've been ignoring her for years. He, he knows how to zoom in and then zero out in the, the relationship. He knows when to speak, help me somebody, and when not to speak. He, he knows what to say and when to say it. He, he knows that she's controlling in the house, so he's thankful for the children there that she can control, and he's happy about the birth of the grandchildren because they bring a different atmosphere and light to the house. And so there are differences in what make them up. Help me somebody. And then they can balance it out. One may be good with finances. The other one may be horrible with finances. One may not believe in paying bills. The other one may be good at paying bills. One may be good at cooking. One may be good at house cleaning. One may be good at manicuring the lawn. They, they bring together the mutual faith of the family being able to survive together. It's only sometime when you get down the road that you look at them and say, God, what have I gotten into? But God is the God that can bring us through. Paul gives us that because now we've seen the scenery and the credentials of Paul in verse number one. He says, I'm Paul, a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm separated to the gospel. I'm an apostle. I'm one of God's men. I have been with the Lord. I met him on the Damascus road. I was on my way to cause havoc and come up against the house of God. 
and the man of God knocked me off my beast and a bright light shone from heaven, called out my maiden name of sin, Saul, Saul. And then God interceded and blessed me and named me again Paul. There's somebody that is thankful today that your name has been changed. There's somebody today that is thankful that God has delivered you and brought you. I got some appreciative people. I, I need some in homeland and some in this room to just be a little more radical and open up your mouth behind your mask and say, I can't breathe. Help me somebody. And I'm going to shout this morning about the goodness of God. I don't know about you, but God has been good to you. I need you to take about 15 seconds in the whole makeup of your walk this morning and just shout in this room and shout in your home and tell God thank you for being so good. Now Paul helps his church family because Paul has brought us to the point of where he said, first, I thank my God through Christ Jesus for you all that your faith is spoken of throughout the world. Uh -huh. Last week, we looked at the words, I've made it to Rome. Yeah. And now Paul unfolds his purpose and the identification and the reason for his arrival. For in verse number 11, he says to them, he says, listen, I long to see you. Good God of mine. It sounds, it sounds uh, like a relationship of one who has been separated from an individual that they love and that they long to see them. Notice what verse number 11 says, for I long to see you. I, I, I've had this zeal and this desire to see you. Have, have any of you ever had in your earlier years before you got married, you had puppy writing love? This I got it. You know, I know this is a text message and, and this is an email generation. But you remember that person you loved when you they were away in college and you wrote them four or five letters a month. Help me somebody. And you were waiting for them to write you back and, and you were longing to see them. And now Paul says, I long to see you. I've heard so much about you, Rome. Rome, the Roman Empire. Rome, the place of riches and wealth. I, I've had a zeal and a desire to come and see you. Paul pours out what is identified as a pastor's heart on a missionary journey yes. to be able because Verses earlier, he talks about a prosperous journey. And now Paul says on this journey, um, some of the saints in Rome were very dear to Paul. There, there were people in Rome like Priscilla and Aquilus that were very dear to Paul. Matter of fact, in Romans chapter 16, verse 3 and 4, it talks about Priscilla's, Priscilla and Aquila's, their relationship of how they long to see Paul. And now Paul has arrived. And not only that, they risk their lives for him, the beloved people, because they wanted to see the man of God. Paul has arrived. Watch this. He says, I long to see you that I may do something, that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift. Uh -huh. To the end ye may be established. Yes, I want to put a footprint and an interest on your spiritual growth and development. And, and I, I long to be in your presence so that I can impart within you spiritual gift. Now, there are times, my brothers and sisters, that there are people along the way that have become confused about spiritual gifts. Paul helps us because 
You remember church family uh, in spiritual gifts. They are mentioned in three key chapters when you look at spiritual gifts throughout the chapter in chapter 12 of Romans. It deals with spiritual gifts. When we come to 1 Corinthians chapter number 12, it speaks of spiritual gifts. The book of Ephesians speaks in chapter number 4 of spiritual gifts. Paul says, I long to be in your presence because we understand that, I understand that every child of God should have at least one, one, at least one spiritual gift. And you say, oh my God. And we're not talking about fruits of the Spirit. Galatians chapter 5 verses 22 down to around verse 27 speaks of fruits of the Spirit. The gift of love, the gift of, of joy, the gift of peace. But now Paul says, I wanted to impart in you spiritual gifts. A new generation, we looked at them years ago, and many of you have come to realize, and I told you years ago, there are 27 spiritual gifts found in the Word of God. There, there, there's the gift of prophecy. And, and there are people that have the gift of prophecy. You know, they, 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 they are just not making a projection. They're not just reading your hand. Help me, somebody. You can save that money. I've been trying to help some of y'all. You, you, you ain't got to go to somebody in the country and have them read your hand down by a pond. You ain't got to go on 7th Avenue to the palm reader. Help me, somebody. You can go to God. And there's the gift of prophecy. Y'all going to help me this morning. I need y'all to talk. That's the gift of service. There are people that just have the gift of service. You know, there, there's this, this, this majority group that don't fit in with the gift of service. They say, I ain't doing nothing unless I get paid. My brothers and sisters, God will break you down. Well, you have to volunteer. Y'all talk back to me. And hope that somebody offer you a gift. The gift of service. There are people that just have a genuine heart for the gift of service. That's gift two. Gift, gift three helps us because it's the gift of teaching. You, you, you are anointed. You have the gift to teach. You can teach the word of God. You can expound on the word of God. It's a gift that God has implanted. And God, like Paul is saying, has imparted within you the gift to teach. There, there, there's the gift of exhortation. You can exhort. You have the gift to be able to exhort. Not only through psalms, not only through singing, but you can exalt people. There are people that deal with depression and you can come along and help them to come out of that with anti-depression because you have, Lord, help me in this room. Somebody at home need to understand you have the gift of exhortation. You got to be able to tell some people, lift up your head, O ye gates. Lift up your head, woman of God. Lift up your head, man of God. Trouble don't last always. God's going to bring you through this season of dysfunction. God's going to bring you through this season of heartaches. God's going to bring you through these tough times that you are encountering in your life. The gift of exhortation. My Angelo helps us with the gift. You got to be able to inspire and encourage, motivate and then escalate people of God. That's the gift that Barnabas had. Barnabas was a man of exhortation. He knew how to encourage others. But then not only that, there's the gift of giving. Oh my God. So put your car in park right there. 
Put your Christian automobile in park right there. The gift of giving. There are some people that actually have the gift of giving. They will give and 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 they will give. And then there are some that are just the opposite. They're looking for who they can pimp, who they can get over the whip, who they can lie to, who they can come up with false reasons why they should not give. But there are people that have the gift of giving. Watch this. There's the gift of leadership. Some people are naturally gifted with the gift of leadership. They're, 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 there's the gift of mercy. There are people that will be merciful. Not too many people carry that gift. The gift of mercy. Then there's the gift of wisdom. There's the gift of knowledge. There's the gift of faith. There's the gift of healing. And in this room and in the media ministry, there are people of God that are believing God for healing. The people that can pray and healing takes place in your life. There's the gift, my brothers and sisters, of miracles. There's the gift of discerning of spirits. Y'all talk back to me. See, when you have the gift of discerning of spirits, it's much more than saying it's something about him I don't like. Y'all talk back to me in here. It's something about her I don't like. The gift of discernment helps you. Because God discerns unto you through spending time with him. Discernment of spirits. And then watch this. There's, there's, there's the gift of tongues. There are people that God has gifted with the gift of tongues. And then there are gifts that God has gifted people with with the gift of interpretation. The gift of interpretation. God has imparted. God has embedded. God has poured into you the gift of interpretation. Watch this. There's the gift of interpretation. There's the gift of tongues. God wants you to be able to understand. God wants you to be able to relate. But then not only that. There's the gift of helps. There's some people that naturally have the gift of helps. Y'all talk back to me in here. They just love to help. With nothing in return, they love to help. The gift of helps. There, there, there's, there's the gift of administration. There are people that naturally God has smiled upon with the gift of administration. And then there are people with the gift of evangelism. They want to see souls saved. They want to be soul winners. They have the harvest spirit. They're knowing that the laborers are few, but the harvest is plentiful. They are soul winners. They have the gift of evangelism. Then there are some who have the gift of pastorialship. They were gifted to be pastors. They were gifted to be leaders. Then there are some, not many, y'all going to shout on this one, that have the gift of celibacy. Not this church, not those at home, but there are some who have the gift of celibacy. It goes beyond, help me somebody. I don't need to be bothered with another man. I don't need nobody else slopping on me. I don't need nobody else bumping on me. I don't need nobody else bothering me. You just have the gift. You can spend the rest of your life in celibacy. See, nobody's raising that hand. You, y'all talk back to me in here. You're fine with just you. You have the gift even as a man of celibacy. I got the right church. You have the gift of voluntarily poverty. You have the gift of matrimony. You have the gift of hospitality. You have the gift of missionary. Here's the one that I love. The gift of intercession. You can enter 
mercy. You wake up early in the morning as a man or woman of God and you are interceding on behalf of people. You are praying for strongholds to be broken. You are praying for families. You are praying for the country. You are praying for your church. You are praying for your pastor. You are praying for your community. You have the gift to intercede, to go in and don't come out until you get a breakthrough from God and God on your behalf, the gift of intercession. And there's the gift of exorcism. Lord, have mercy. You, you know how to deal with demons. Demon over here, demon over there, demon everywhere. You just know how to deal with demonic forces and attacks of the enemy. Paul said, I come to impart in you yes. spiritual gifts. I, I, I come to be a blessing to the end that ye may be established. I, I come to bring the word to you. I shared the word in Acts chapter 27 and Acts chapter 28. And now I'm here with Rome and my assignment in writing to you is that I want to share a word with you about the Lord. That you may have a solid foundation. That you may be established. Yes, sir. I've heard much about you. Uh -huh. and now I come to share with you. Uh, thank you Lord. But not only to impart in you. He says, he says, that, that is that I may be covered together with you by the mutual faith. That I might be comforted with you by the mutual faith. What's the mutual faith? That we both believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ. That we both believe in the good news message. That we are saints that are on one accord. And we're in fellowship together. And our fellowship together is we understand the power of God. We understand the power of the gospel. We understand and believe in the death, the burial, and the, the resurrection. Our mutual faith. There's a commonality between us. We believe in the same God. We shout about the same faith. There are people, there are times in this church during football season where I've taken a poll at the beginning of the season. And I'll do it again this year and I ask people, who's your favorite team? And who do you want to see go all the way to the Super Bowl? And there are people that will pick a team. And then as about mid-season, around October, early November, they come up to me and say, Pastor, I've changed teams. Help me somebody. There, there are some women that change teams just because of the quarterback. How he looks when he takes his helmet off. Yeah, there are some people get happy about that. There, there are some people that look at certain athletes, help me somebody, and they get excited and they can't even tell their spouse, I, I'm excited about him. They, 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 they look at Beckham, help me somebody, and they look at others and they get a joy in watching them. Some of you have told athletes in, in your mind, my God, he is so fine. And then you wake up on the sofa, help me somebody, and say, I'm home. He, he, he's right there. And, 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 so, and so there are some that are diehards throughout the year. There are some that are Dallas Cowboy diehards all year round. All my life, help me somebody, thank you Dallas, all my life I have been a Miami Dolphin fan since 1972. Win or lose, victory or not, I'm a fan, I'm a Dolphin. No matter what happens to them, they can go 0 and 16 and the next year I'm still a Dolphin. There are times when people will shift along the way, but the Christian this room and the Christian at home is a God's child no matter what happens. 
Come hell or trouble, I'm still with God. Come cancel or sickness, I'm still with God. Lose a loved one, I'm still with God. Get laid off or terminated, I'm still with God. Get a promotion or a breakthrough, I'm still with God. I will let nothing or nobody separate me. The love of God. Why? You can, you can remain standing. We got a mutual relationship. Mutual faith. That God is my strength. That God is a very present help in the time of trouble. Come on, how many of you made up your mind? Thank the Lord. And you're going to stay with God. He is your victim. He is your way. And you trust. Have you believed in him? Stay with God. They have that in common. The power of the gospel. And I pray that that coming out will stay with you. Your relationship and your walk with God. Come on, we extend the invitation to discipleship now. Believing and trusting God. We take it at His word. That I'll stand on the promises of the Father. Perhaps you may be here today and you may be in this home or you may be at home. And you need this relationship. You can call in or you can text in saying, I believe in God for salvation. Yes, what will it profit a man or woman to gain the whole world and then die and lose his soul? I believe in you, God. Taking you at your word. If thou would confess with thy mouth, Believe in thine heart that God has raised his son from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. Salvation is of the Lord. If you're in this room, you can walk down front. If you're at home, you can call or text in this morning. Say, I need the Lord. I need thee. Father God, we thank you. And we pray for a saved house. We pray, God, for healing. And we pray for salvation. If there are any among us that may not be saved, draw them not, draw them close to thee. Bless and be with them. Cover us and keep us. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. God bless you. Come on, remain standing. Listen. Tuesday, we share the study of God's Word. We've been blessed with four series already on the simplicity of salvation. We'll share one more on the simplicity, how simple salvation is on Tuesday night at 7.30. And then you'll join in with me on prayer on this Thursday evening at 7.15. And we thank God for the growth in our Bible class. We thank God for the blessings of people joining in in our time of prayer. Let's give our praise leaders a hand today. Let's give these ushers a hand and our media ministry a hand today. Thank you, media ministry and musicians and people of God. Look forward to next Sunday. I ask all candidates to meet me here at 7.30 on next Sunday. Be in the house of God as others will fellowship with us on next Sunday at 8 a.m. Let's be kind to our guests, show hospitality and love, support the usher ministry of their endeavor on next Sunday. Those who will travel with me today at 12 noon, if you have the address, I'm sure you do, that you can be with me at 12 noon today at Healing Place to share with Pastor Thornton in their church anniversary. 
And so we thank God for you and we pray for God's blessings upon you. We share also Sister Beulah Johnson shared in her birthday uh, this week and there's going to be a drive-by. Amen. On Saturday, amen. On Saturday between the hours of 6, amen, to 8 p.m., amen, at 11040 Northwest 22nd Court, right? Is it Court Avenue? Avenue Road, amen. I know the 11040. I know that the whole block back and forth. Amen. Amen. B, Saturday between 6 and 8, we share in the drop off of gifts. But if even if you're not there, you share with a gift with her in love. And amen in the near future. I share with this church the importance of sharing in gifts and blessings to people of God. Amen. And I pray that over the years you will keep that in your spirit and in your heart. Let's prepare, amen, to close out now. You have time to eat breakfast. See you at 12 noon if you're going to be there. You have time to eat, amen, eat, amen. 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 This church loves to eat, amen. See how all the ushers holding their head down and waving their hand at the same time, amen. God bless you. Thank you, visitors. Thank you, loved ones. Father God, we thank you for this hour. We thank you for your presence and for your people. We pray now for safety in our travels. Bless in our 12 no worship experience. Bless families and loved ones. Keep us in thy love and tender care. Bring us in for the study of your word on Tuesday and prayer on Thursday. Then God, meet us here next Sunday. Have your way in this place. Anoint afresh, even in advance, that thy labor is not in vain, but thy service is to be full, fruitful and make full proof of thy ministry. Bless, in Jesus' name we pray. May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with these people now and forever. Let the church say, Amen. Amen. Amen.